Good evening. How you doing? Man, he even got a couch here for me. That's great. Well, uh, listen, it's great to be here um, at TED. I mean, uh, Tampa is, is an amazing place. I mean, the people, the food, and, and the weather, I, I mean, I almost don't even want to go. I got me on this little, this red dot, so I'm going to make sure I stay within my parameters. You know, red dots is not too good, and, uh, you know, you, I watch a lot of Die Hard, so red dots on folks ain't good, okay? But, hey, are you the author of your future? You know, are you the author of your, your life? It's kind of easy for me, and you guys will know I'm kind of a jokester, but it's easy for me because my name is Arthur, <laughs> okay? So, but um, I have six points that I'm going to talk to you about, about being the author of your life, your success, and, and, and your future uh, until, you know, you guys, you know, hopefully you can't be renamed or anything, but it's going to get you squared away real easy. Um, but imagine this. I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, running uh, a, a multi million dollar company, you know, out of my dorm room, 26 years old, okay? But imagine this is you, okay? 26 years old, you know, a millionaire by the time you're 26, you got, um, you know, multi-million dollar company, uh, companies are doing what they need to be doing. Um, I, I call my, uh, my president of our company up. We're going to talk about our quarterly earnings, what we're going to do, how we're going to take things to the next level, you know, what can we do to be the best and, and, and take over the world and be the next Charles Schwab, okay? We walk around the, uh, the, the boardwalk, very similar to out here in, um, in, uh, in, in Tampa here, where uh, they got the boardwalk, the people are there, the, the, the ocean and the waves and things like that are moving. It wasn't the ocean, it was just, you know, just a lake there, but I like the Tampa backdrop a little bit better. So, you know, it's a very dramatic thing. And I'm, I'm very proud of, you know, what he said and what he's doing. He's excited because he's like, wow, man, can you believe where we took this company from? Because I remember from the dorm room, and now you're at a point where this company is just really at the, at the pinnacle and at the point of really going to another level. He asked me a question, you know, what's the next step? And I said, sell everything. Sell everything at the height. And, um, and he was like, well, the next, when he responded back to me, he said, well, uh, Arthur, uh, how soon and when? And, and, I, you know, and I told him, and I said, immediately. And we did that. Okay? So why would I do that at the height of my career, the height of everything? Why would somebody do something like that? It's crazy. You're a millionaire, you're, you know, you got success, you got, you know, some fame. I was doing a couple speaking engagements just like this great event here. Why would somebody do something that crazy? Then I thought about something that my mother told me. She says, Arthur, why would you ever want to be a public success and a private failure? I never wanted to be, you know, just the point where I was doing things in the public, but and, and deep down, I wasn't privately doing the things that I wanted to do. Was it not about the money? Was it about the countless hours that I was working? Was it that I wasn't doing my passion, you know, at that particular time? So let me go and jump into those, those, uh, those six steps that we, we talked about. The first thing you have to do is look at what do you, what is the whole purpose and meaning of your life? You know, is it something just that defines you by being in, in, in business? Is it something that, that defines you about, oh, do I have the, the, the best looking boyfriend, girlfriend? Like, what is it that, that really like, like drives you to the success? I call this thing called life wealth, something that is, that is a total completion, uh, a thing where you are, have the, the, the personal satisfaction that's in your life, your wealth, and, and, and your career. It's not just one thing that it, that, that, it, that it revolves around, okay? So for me, I had a lot of other things that were already successful, but that, that, that just, it, didn't, it wasn't complete success. So what I looked at, I said, okay, well, if in my life, if a person is, um, you know, just say they, they, they are, they are health nut and they do all the things that they do, but they go home and they're broke and they can't afford the stuff that they want to end up doing. That's not success. You don't want to be so successful where you can't spend the time with your family and, and loved ones. So I think you guys kind of get the point of, of what, 
I mean by, by, by life wealth. So it's the personal satisfaction of your life, your wealth, and also your career. So the first part of that would be point one. I know you guys have a lot of notebooks and things like that out there, so write that down. The first one is vision. You gotta have a victorious vision. You gotta have passion in your life. Like how do you know like what a real vision is? You know, it's something that when you, when you wake up in the morning, it just, you just can't wait to, to get up so you can get on it. Um, when you go to bed at night and you still can't go to bed because you're still just thinking about it, you know, that's that passion. That's things that you got to have. That's what creates that life well. It creates that fulfillment to make you feel good inside. I mean, it means it's that, that driving force. When you have a, a, a vision like that, you also have to get knowledge based on what that is. You know, after I, I sold the company, we made millions of dollars, did, did great things, I had the bright idea I wanted to be a film producer. You know, sounds glorious, but I didn't know anything about writing a film, okay, or doing anything to it. You know, it's crazy. But um, we, went, we went on to, um, uh, to, to deal with some, some individuals, met a couple great people that were clients of mine. Uh, one was the Omar Tyrese, a New York Times bestselling author. Then I, I did a deal with them in Lionsgate, had a multi-picture deal. Then we went on to uh, meet the creator of Final Destination, a $650 million uh, hit maker, you know, in the horror thriller space. And, you know, all in all, it was because I was passionate and had the ability to, to meet some of these, these individuals. And, it, and that energy just kind of just created and made one big, one big ball of things. But before I did that, I had to use what I had. And that was the knowledge base. A, I knew I was a, a great, um, you know, money maker when it, when it comes to raising capital. I knew I was a good deal maker. So I was able to utilize those things all in, in, in one thing with that vision. My next point is a power plan. Because I didn't know how I was going to do any of the stuff that I'm doing now. But a, a power plan is a written roadmap to your success, OK? A written roadmap to your, sex, your success. Because it, it can't be something where that you think that, oh, OK, um, I got this vision. I mean, a lot of us have a vision. A lot of people try to plan. But it's something that is written. And you can't tuck it away in your drawer, OK? You can't just tuck it in your drawer and just look at it and say, okay, it's just going to be there. It has to be something that's going to be visual that you look at on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? You know, for me, I remember when I wanted to, um, to, to I said, I'm going to be a millionaire by this age, da-da-da-da. So I, had to, I used to write all these little sticky notes on my, uh, on my mirror in my room, in my dorm room. You know, save $100 a day, do this, do that, do that. And it was so visual. So it's a written roadmap to your success. Now, you want to look at things from a, a short-term, a mid-term, and a long-term goal plan. It shouldn't be anything that's so far in a way to where you can't ever achieve. It's like, oh, when I get to be 98, I'm going to retire, and I'm going to enjoy my life finally after I work hard to do this. No. When you are goal planning, oh, and this is, again, this is your life, your wealth, Okay, it's your career. Again, this, you're authoring your, your whole success of, of what you're trying to do. So you got to look at it. So short term, what are the things I'm going to do right now? Okay, this is over the next minute, over the next 30 days, the next 90 days. How does this look? This is my outcome. Okay, what am I going to do over the, the next, um, you know, five years? What does it look like 30 years from now? How do I, what kind of legacy am I going to leave for future generations, critical, critical. But oftentimes, people get stuck into this thing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Oh, I'm gonna, I should have. I wish I could have did that. I could have did this. We don't want to get stuck there. And that goes into my next point, the execution point. This is that driving force. This is you being able to achieve the achievable. Not the unachievable, because God has given us so many different abilities that's out there that we can achieve, but we got to utilize and we got to move. We, we have to move. Why don't we move? Well, it's, it's kind of easy. A lot of folks, they don't want to move because of obstacles. 
And we all get obstacles. It's kind of hard sometimes, you know, when, you know, things don't go quite the way we did it. We got this great vision. You know, we're waking up in the morning. We're going to bed late at night and all these other things keeping us up. We, we've been researching it. We're doing good. We got a, a plan of attack. Then the next thing, an obstacle happens. So imagine this. I'm sure we all got GPS, right? We know how to use GPS. But imagine if you were driving down a road and every time you hit a rock or a bump, your GPS says rerouting, <laughs> rerouting. You would never get to your goal. It's impossible. It's impossible. You're just going to be going around in circles. We don't want to go around in circles. We want to move. We want to have life wealth. We want to have that satisfaction in our life, our wealth, our career, and we want to do it in all of those factors. I'm going to get to a point where um, we're talking about the, the marketing piece and, and you being a brand. It's my fourth point. It's called product you. You are a brand. You are the CEO. You are the author of your life, your career, and your wealth. Businesses have this, they have a tool that they call a SWOT analysis. Probably got a lot of business students here. It's called strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, in strengths, you know, we all know what those are, and we're good at it. We, we kind of brag about it. Hey, we're good at this. We're good at that. But it's important because as you go after your strengths, you, you can move in the, in the right direction and at least have a good start when you're looking at any of your goals that you're, you're, you're dealing with. My strength, personally, was, okay, I'm a deal maker. I raise money. I build brands. When I went into um, the, the movie studios, again, we didn't even have a script. But yet, we got a 14-picture deal worth millions of dollars just because of the things that I was good at. Now, this goes to my next point. I had weaknesses. I didn't know how to write a script. <laughs> we didn't really have a budget yet to do everything that we needed to do. So we had a lot of things that we didn't have. But that's okay. At least you got to admit and know what your weaknesses are. How, have you, how are you going to accomplish your goals if you don't know what your weaknesses are? And admit to them and be true to yourself and know that, look, this is what I need to do to, to do those things. So we got great script writers. We got great distribution companies. All the things that I was not good at, I made sure that I got other folks that was around me that was really freaking good at it, right? You got to. It's the only way it works. Then you got opportunities out there. You want to look at the opportunities that you have in your life. You don't want to go into an industry that's like, like dying or not working. I mean, you know, think about, I wrote about in my book, Only the Crazy and Fearless Went Big, where, you know, Henry Ford was making a big transition at the time. You know, people ain't they're not in horse buggy and carriages anymore. So that probably ain't a good thing to be, you know, making carriages at the time. Just ain't that smart you probably want to go through to something more mechanical. <laughs> then you have threats. You have to look at threats. Again, we're not just talking about business here. We're talking about your career as well as your, your personal life. One of the threats for me, this hit really home. Um, my father has diabetes. And he says, son, you know, look, you have to be aware and watch your sugar. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know how fathers are. But he's right. You've got to understand that. What's the use of having wealth, having all these great things, but I'm blind or I'm lost a limb or not doing the things that I want to do? Again, this is life wealth. We're talking about having total fulfillment. Total fulfillment. So don't just have a job and you're working. Tell me, oh, I'm just going to make this cash. I've got to get this. got to get on the ground. No. Are you impacting other people? Do you, do you feel good at night? Okay. Are you, are you, when you wake up in the morning, feel like this is what God meant, me, meant for me to do? So these are the things that we're talking about. So, so have a complete life. Now, the next part of this is networking. I kind of like this. 
One of my best friend's father told me this. He said, if you got nine broke friends, you're bound to be the 10th one. Okay? So hang around only winners. All my boys are winners. All my guys are winners. That's what we do. You know, but I take it to anything and any part of my life. For example, you know, if I want to be a, a, a fast sprinter or doing something with the best sprinters, I'm not going to be hanging around walkers. No. I want folks that's going to move, that's going to do things, that's going to challenge me to be faster, that's going to be quicker, that's going to be able to do things. So, and it's not about just taking, you know, when you network with people. It's about also, you know, you know you're giving. You know, what can you offer to this relationship, whether it be business? You should also be able to quickly identify whatever your goal is to someone else within 20 seconds. You should be clear, be very concise, and know where you're going. Critical. Dealing with the unknown. Wow. As an entrepreneur, it is, uh, it's a very scary place out here. Man, where are you going to get that next dollar? Sometimes you feel like you're about to build a, mil a billion dollars, million dollars, and next thing you know, hey, uh, you may have lost three million. I've been there before. I've been there before. So how do you deal with that fear factor of that uncertainty of thinking that people are not going to accept you, your goals, your dreams, and, and, and all these things? Or do you even feel like you can actually do it? Can you move forward? Can you go from here to there and then over there? Then sometimes you got to go back to here. And how are people going to feel about that? Well, I'm going to tell you. Number one, you got to have a victorious vision. You go back to your points. You got to have that power plan, okay? You got to be able to execute, overcome those obstacles. You got to believe in yourself as a brand. Know who you are as a person and be honest with yourself that I'm willing to do what it takes to get where, I'm, where I want to go. Am I willing to be around the right people at that time? Last thing, can I overcome obstacles and, fit and, and, be, and not be scared? So I want to leave that with you. I want you to, you know, be a, uh, not just a public success and a private failure. And remember that only the crazy and fearless win big. Thank you. <laughs>